So we left our application with this 404 because we passed in a HTML template that didn't exist, which was index2.html. But now we want to make this more dynamic. We want to pick up what file is being requested from the URL. Now there are a couple of ways of doing this and there's multiple things built into Go that could help us get this done. So let's have a look at a few of them. So over in our application, when we're in our load file function, I'm just going to print out some different ways of doing this for now. So inside of our handler function, I'm just going to print some things out here so we can see what's actually happening. So up at the top of the handler here, I'm going to do a format and we're going to do a print F for a formatted print. And we're going to go percentage V and we want to replace that with, and let's go into the request and then the URL. Now let's just actually just print this out so we can actually see what's in that URL. And we'll just change this from index to, to just index so we don't get any kind of errors. I'll tell you what, actually, let's just comment out this completely for now. And we'll just print out the URL property on the request. So stop and start your server if you haven't already. Then over in the browser, let's give this a refresh. You can see now this gives us the blank page, but back over in our terminal, we can see we've now printed out that URL, which at the moment is just forward slash because we haven't put anything else on there. So to give a better idea what's happening here, after the port, we're just going to do a forward slash and we're going to do index.html. Back over in our console, we can see the next thing to be printed out is forward slash index.html. We can actually pick this up now and use it to find the corresponding .html file. But this isn't very flexible at the moment. So, for example, let's say if a user goes forward slash test forward slash index.html and just check this in the console again. You see the path property in the URL is returning the entire string after the forward slash. So what we can do is bring in another library built into Go called path. And that has a function on it called base, which will just get us the end of the path. So let's give that a try. So over at the top of our file, at the top, let's import path. And then down here, we can do path.base. And then we can just pass it in that r.url. And then we want to go into the URL and get the path. So now let's stop and start our server and then test this out. So I'm just going to refresh on the page. And then over in our terminal, we can see we now have the end of the URL string. We have the index.html. So no matter how many other things we put into the URL here, so we can do tests and then maybe like test2, for example, forward slash index.html, we can see we're only getting the end of that URL, which is what we want. We want to load in that HTML file. Okay, so one more thing to note here, because we're getting user input, we probably don't want to be using the path directly. That's okay because there's a built-in method called escape path. So if we just call escape path here, instead of just getting the path directly, this will remove any kind of special characters that somebody's tried to inject into the file name. It's probably also worth noting here because we're using this base function in the path library, this will also protect us from any kind of directory transversal attacks. So if somebody's trying to do something dodgy, like trying to load a file up outside of the root of our project. So something like this, they could be trying to break out and then going into then trying to go into home of a user or something along those lines and then into documents or something even worse into one of the system files. This path base will remove all this. So we are protected against directory transversal attacks. Okay, so now we actually have that file name. All we need to do is pass it into our load file. Let's uncomment this now. And what we can do is let's just copy this here. So we want the path base and then we want the escaped URL path. And then instead of hard coding an index here, and just pass this in. Now let's stop and start our server and test this out. And now let's just remove all this and just go to localhost port 9000. And we see we get the 404 because the system can't find a file when there isn't one being passed in. So let's try and go to index.html now. It's forward slash index.html. And you can see there we get our index page back. So it's probably worth checking if the URL is returning a nil. And if it is, return the index page by default. So in the next video, let's look at how we can make these templates more dynamic using Go's built-in template and functionality. This will allow us to make our templates more dynamic because we'll be able to pass data down from Go to the view file. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. 
because I have other Go related content on my channel and also a lot of PHP and Laravel related content if you're interested in web development in general. 